in part C, we're being asked to rewrite the expression for f of x into this form over here. And then you can see that it's actually pretty similar to what we obtained in part A and part B. So recall that in part A, we found that f of x is equal to this infinite sum. And then in part B, we found that c of n, so this c n over here, can be expressed by this integral. So in order to prove that this expression here is true, in order to prove that this expression can indeed represent f of x, we're going to have to manipulate these expressions a bit. So I'm going to start off by substituting in this expression over here, k. So let's try to substitute this in and see if we can arrive at these expressions. So k is equal to n pi over a. And I personally like to add a subscript n over here for the k to signify that for every different n, there is a different k, so that there is not just one single k that applies to every single choice of n. So I think, I personally think it's clearer to add a subscript over here. So I'm going to substitute this inside this expression. So f of x is equal to this infinite sum. We have cn. And then all we have to do is just to substitute the k inside. And then once again, uh, I'm going to, I want to bring to your attention that since we're trying to move from this expression into this expression, I'm going to try to bring out this 1 over square root of 2 pi term from this uh, from the summation term over here. So all I'm trying to do is try to go from here and try to construct this alternative form here bit by bit. So I'm going to try to create this 1 over square root of 2 pi term. And then I can do that by adding it over here to the front and then multiplying it back by the square root of 2 pi. So you can see that these just cancel out to 1 so it doesn't affect the overall value. So kmx. So uh, now that we've moved to this point, you can compare what we have at this point with what we want to arrive at. So you can see that both of these terms, they have this 1 over square root of 2 pi, which is good. And then both of these terms have this e to the power of ikx. So both of these terms have these terms. So the only difference now is that for here, we have the square root of 2 pi times cn. And then for here, we have f of k times this change in k. So it seems to suggest that f of k times the change in k is going to be equal to the square root of 2 pi times cn. So let's see if that is true. So we have, so let's move on to this, this expression over here. So we want to investigate two pi, square root of 2 pi times cn to see what this is going to be equal to. And then we can just substitute this in directly. So we have negative a to a f of x, and then e to the power of negative i k n x dx. And then for this term over here, I'm going to do something very similar. So you see that there's this 1 over square root of 2 pi term in front of the integral. So I'm going to try to force that out of this term uh, in the same way I did here for the summation uh, term. So I'm going to attach this 1 over square root of 2 pi, and then I'm going to multiply the remaining term with, this, with the square root of 2 pi. So that square root of 2 pi is going to combine with this square root of 2 pi, and that will become 2 pi. And then we'll divide this by 2a. And then this integral goes from negative a to a f of x e to the power of negative i k n x dx. And then you can see that these 2's over here cancel out. So you see that there's this 1 over square root of 2 pi, negative a to a f of x e to the power of negative i k n x dx. So we have this integral and then this whole integral get mul gets multiplied by pi divided by a. So you can see that the square root of 2 pi times cn is equal to this entire term over here. And I should bring to your attention that the pi divided by a is actually equal to the change in k. So you can see that k, a change in k is the increment of k from one end to the, to the next. So what that means is that the change in k is equal to, so you can imagine going from the next step so you're starting at n, so you move on to the next step, n plus 1. So the change in k will be the next step minus the original step, and that will be, good, be equal to pi over a. So this is the length of each step of k, so as n keeps varying. So you can see that change in k is actually equal to, the, to pi over a. So that corresponds to this term over here. So for this term, I can just rewrite this as the change in k. And then for this integral over here, you can see that it is exactly equal to what we have over here. So this term here is indeed equal to f of k. So now what this means is that 
We started off with the square root of 2 pi times cn, and then we managed to, through all these steps, prove that this is indeed equal to the change in k times f of k. So what that means is that I can just substitute this expression into this summation over here. So what this means is that for the original expression that I had, I can just replace this with the change in k times f of k. And then incidentally, with a bit of rearranging, we can see that this is exactly equal to the expression that Griffiths gives us. So we've verified that his alternative expression is indeed valid. So I should add this subscript here as well. So i k n x times the change in k. So you can see that this is exactly equal to this term over here. So we have verified that from the expressions we found in part A and part B, it can indeed lead to this conclusion that Griffiths gives us. So it does lead to this conclusion over here. So f of x can be expressed using this alternative form.